Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to be talking about this multimedia Packard Bell computer I recently picked up. Uh, this model is an XL 39CDT. Uh, it's like XL with an A. Uh, I'm guessing it's like a play on the word Excel. Um, anyways, yeah, this is kind of a unique machine. I a Packard Bell gets a bad rap, and uh, a lot of times it's pretty deserved. But I kind of I have a soft spot. Uh, for it. Um, growing up, my brother-in-law had one, and it was it was kind of one of my first experiences with a computer. Um, not, I mean, my first experiences were with, like, Commodore 64, Amiga, uh, Tandy, but with a PC, it was kind of like my first experience uh, with a machine. Uh, so I have a soft spot for them, and I pick them up, and it's just the look. I mean, <laughs> if anything you can say about Packard Bell, besides the fact that maybe they made crap computers, is they did have unique and interesting case designs. Um, and this isn't really any exception. Uh, I did post this on a forum, and I got a message about it, and apparently I was told it's kind of a rare and sort of maybe sought-after model, which is kind of interesting. Um, apparently there weren't a whole lot of these produced. Um, this is a 486 machine. Uh, you can kind of guess that right away by there's a turbo button on here. Yeah, there's a turbo button and a reset. And uh, you have your power and uh, hard drive light there. Nothing too strange. But this is kind of neat. You've got a little panel that opens up. I don't really see that very often. Um, it still has the original spec sticker on it. There's your power button is down here. Uh, floppy drive, another and then we have a 1.2 megabyte floppy drive and 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. There's a CD drive here. I believe this machine did come with a CD drive. That's probably what the CD is in the uh, model means. But I don't think this is the stock CD that came with it. It just, I th this is a rewritable uh, drive. So this would not be the one that came with it. This is what was installed when I picked this machine up from the thrift store. But this is, uh, this is after, afterwards someone installed that. Um, uh, not too exciting on the back. Uh, let me make sure. Yeah, not too exciting. We've got the power supply in the bottom. Uh, one, two, three, four, five expansion ports. Two PS2 ports for keyboard and mouse. Built-in VGA. Uh, printer port and a serial port. And these have been labeled by the previous owner. Um, about this machine, I brought it home, I hooked it up, it worked fine. Um, th there was no hard drive in it, so uh, I got a post screen and then you know it would try to load, it would come up like no boot device found, no boot disk found. Um, but it did, it, it, it powered up, it posted, cool. Um, I tried to add a hard drive and I don't, I, I don't know if it's my luck with Packer Bells or if the their built-in uh, IDE controllers just sucked. But this is like the second or third Packard Bell I cannot get the built-in IDE controller to recognize a drive. And I've tried several drives. I've tried newer drives, which sometimes work. It'll only see like 504 megabytes, but they'll work. I tried old drives from the era. I tried like a 400 megabyte drive that had all the stat, you know, the specs of the drive on it, the cylinders and heads and sectors and stuff. I, I typed that in the BIOS. Nothing. It would not detect, you know, it would not detect or work with drive. So, it's like, okay, well, I'll just put in, a, you know, a card, a ID controller card, and I'll disable the onboard. I've had a lot of success with that before. But I didn't want to do it that night. So I put it back together, put the case back on, tested it, hit the power button, boom, posted. Turn it off, sat on my uh, computer desk for about two days. So, well, I'm going to put in the hard drive controller, see if I can get a hard drive running on it now. Nothing. Power supply died. Uh, apparently in those two days, I looked at it wrong, or, you know, I, it didn't like the way I glanced at it out of the side of my eye or something, and it just, it, it, it's dead. The power supply, as far as I can figure, uh, the power supply is dead. Um, I hit the power button, no lights come on, the little internal fan spins for like half a second, and then nothing, and then I get strange sounds from the power supply. So I'm guessing for whatever reason, in those two days it sat there, the PSU died. Um, normally that wouldn't be a big problem. Uh, I'll show you in a minute when I open it up. I don't think it's a proprietary drive in this thing, but it is 
not quite standard. And you know, I don't want to hack this thing up, especially if it's kind of an uncommon model. Um, to put a drive in, I, I don't know. I haven't attempted it yet. I'm gonna. I guess you guys are kind of, kind of go on this journey with me. Uh, take. I'm gonna take out the power supply. I'm gonna at least hook up another one to see if definitely if that is the problem. And if it is just the power supply died, I'm gonna find a way to get a new one in there. Hopefully, um, doesn't look like it's too difficult, but I don't know. I'll show you guys when I open this thing up. Right. I hope that first part wasn't too dark. I, uh, I got carried away. I forgot to turn on my secondary uh, lighting source. <laughs> so, <clears throat> sorry if that first part of the video is a little bit too dark. Um, you know, there's the front. If you didn't get to see it well. Um, so I'm going to open this thing. Now, it took me a minute when I first brought this home to uh, open it up because I kept trying to do it like a traditional case. I, I tried to pull the back. I kept trying to pull it back and up. It doesn't work like that, it slides forward. So, let me, if I can get it. <laughs> uh, okay, um, hold on a minute. Okay, that took a minute. Yeah, it gets a little stuck sometimes, but yeah, this, the whole front, including the front, slides forward. This bed, she isn't helping. I just kind of. Oh my. And there we go. So. Oh, this key, by the way, uh, that locks out the keyboard. So if for some reason you have this model, you pick it up somewhere and it, you, you, it says keyboard locked or your keyboard isn't responding when you boot it up. Uh, unlock this thing. I didn't have the key for it, I just used an X-Acto knife, kind of stuck it in, turned it, unlocked the keyboard, and it worked fine. Um, so here's the inside. I mean, right away it's not really standard because of how the power supply is at the bottom. Usually it's at the top. Although this style has come back into favor. My new PC case, it has a power supply in the bottom. Uh, supposedly, I don't know that's better, I don't know, maybe they're ahead of their time. But it, you can see the, the issue with the power supply. Um, there's a hole here, and there's a power switch, and that, you know, that's how you turn it on like that. So, here, let me get you an AT. So, in a normal, usual AT power supply, it's got this. There's no hole in this thing. I mean, I'm thinking I can. Maybe if I pull this out, there's a, I don't know. I, I don't mess around with power supplies. I, I'm thinking maybe there's a way that I could, I mean, it fits, it's the same size, but I guess I just need to mount this. It won't mount, there's no space. Uh, I'd have to rig up some way. I mean, I'm not really good. I'm not like an engineer or anything. I, I mean, it might be obvious to some of you guys, but I'm not really sure how I'm gonna get this to work. Um, if that power supply is dead. So, yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, something neat about this thing. Here, let me show you guys. All right, something real quick I like, I've noticed a lot on a lot of Packard Bells is I like how inside the case you get stickers a lot of times. Um, I don't like the positioning on this sticker because it's kind of an awkward, it's small and it's hard to see and it's like, in the case, now you can't get your head in there if you don't have great eyesight to get a little good look. But yeah, it has a diagram, jumper settings, some configurations and stuff, which is nice. I just wish this sticker was like maybe here on the side or something. Um, anyways, uh, something cool. I when I opened this machine up, where the CPU? Okay. Now, what CPU is supposed to be in here is actually an Intel uh, 50 megahertz DX2 SX. So that's without the math coprocessor and um, it's running on a 25 megahertz front side bus. Uh, it's actually not that much faster than a, uh, than a 33 megahertz chip because of, you know, that's running on a 33 megahertz front side bus. 50 megahertz CPU is faster, but you know, the, the front side bus, the communication speed with the RAM and whatnot is slower, so it, it works out to not being that much faster. Anyways, someone upgraded this machine at some point. Right there. 
to an Intel overdrive, which is pretty cool because I don't have an Intel overdrive. And what these were, these were kind of like drop-in uh, CPU replacements for 46 machines to increase their power. This is the fastest one. This is a 100 megahertz chip. So this increased the CPU speed to 100 megahertz. Usually they had little features that weren't quite standard, like write back cache, uh, things like that, that made them a little bit quicker. Um, but that's really cool, that chip in there. I, honestly, even if I get this working, I, I might take it out. Um, I have a 50 megahertz DX2 uh, chip that I might just put in there to make it a little bit more stock. But um, I don't know if I'm gonna hold on to this machine, but I definitely want this chip. Um, so I'm probably gonna hold on to this CPU. It's a cool, that's cool. It, that was a cool little pleasant surprise to find that in there. Um, but anyways, yeah, not not too much stand. They're all I one, two, three, four, five ISA slots. Um, this is an IDE controller. This is I put this in to try to get the hard drive working before I realized the power supply was died because I looked at it cross or something. Um, this is just like a modem, and there's a parallel port card. These were in here install pre-installed when I picked this up. And here is the sound card, uh, pretty standard for Packard Bell. This is original because you can see Packard Bell stickers on the chips, but it's just a crystal, um, it's just a Sound Blaster 16 clone. It's really nothing special. Um, Alright, so let's see if I can get this thing apart and uh, see what I can do here. Alright, now before I start taking it apart, I just want to try one more time. I've hooked up the monitor, I've hooked up the power, um, so let's see, actually, I just hooked up the keyboard too, there. All right, so let's see if this powers up. Maybe maybe it's liking me more today. Um, but yeah, here's a look at the fan, and you'll see what I mean. Ready? That's what it does. Nope, see, that's what it's been doing. So I'm, it spins for a second. I don't even get lights. I, I swear two days ago this machine booted up and posted fine. I checked all the connections. You know, I wasn't messing with the power supply or the connections when I was trying to put the hard drive in, so I don't, I don't know. Um, so, we'll see what I can do with it. Alright, so here's where we are with this. I took out the power supply, uh, disconnected everything, and then I, I hooked up just a generic AT power supply, and I powered it on, and it, it worked. The light power light came on, the fan started spinning, um, but it, it didn't post. Um, I was getting no video out. Um, the drives were, con I connected up the drives, and they weren't, you know, it wasn't going through, it wasn't like the video wasn't working, and it was like booting up and posting, it wasn't checking the drives, I didn't get a speaker beep, I got nothing, um, just that it was getting power, it's like, that's weird, um, I mean, I hope it's not on the motherboard that's the problem, because I mean, that was a completely separate power supply unit, so then I, I hooked up the original one again, uh, just to check, and it's doing the same thing. Um, so I guess the power supply wasn't the problem. Uh, unfortunately, I'm thinking something on the motherboard uh, is stopped working. So, so I'll show you now. So now it's fan spinning up. Got the power light on now. The turbo, it works. But it's not, like even when I, but there's no posting going, there's no speaker beeps for errors, there's, it's not, there's nothing, it's not getting video, so I have no idea, um, I'm just thinking maybe a component on the motherboard failed, which sucks, because it's not a half bad machine, I mean, it, I think it could take up the 512 kilobytes of L2 cache, um, it's got a Cirrus Logic chip here on the motherboard, uh, GD5424, is the uh, chip here. I think that can take up to a megabyte of RAM. I mean, I think, I believe I also read on the spec sheet on the sticker that this is running on the um, VLB, the VESA bus. So, I mean, this is a, it's a decent machine. Um, right now it has 24 megabytes of FPM RAM. Um, I don't know, I think it maybe 64, 32 is the max. I don't know for sure, but it's a half decent machine and uh, from what I've been told it's pretty uncommon uh, so it's just it's gonna suck if the motherboards dead and um, you know it can't be fixed uh, so I don't know I mean I'm gonna take this stuff out and take a better look at the motherboard maybe it's 
Maybe it's some cat. Maybe there's something obvious like a blown capacitor. Um, I already took out the battery. The battery was leaking very mildly, but it didn't look like it did any damage. So I had already removed it and cleaned up that. So I don't think that's the problem, but I don't know. I'm just going to get all this clutter away and then take a better look at the board and hopefully I'll find something. So we'll be back. All right. Well, as you can see, it has posted now and I've got it working and I figured out what was, what was wrong. Um, of course, there's still no hard drive in it, and the, there's no CMOS battery, so it's going to do that. But the stupidest things. Uh, at some point, um, before the one. Okay, I guess my memory is a little bit flawed. When I put this thing back together after trying to put in a hard drive, I guess I didn't try to uh, power it up um, because the problem was this: um, the sound card uh, is controlling the CD-ROM drive. Uh, focus and at some point it was disconnected and I had connected it to this one over here Which is the wrong uh, port. It's for a different type of CD drive um, When it should be connected to this one Apparently that was enough to stop it from posting and even Powering it for at some point. I don't know. Maybe the power supply got loose. I, I don't know but, I mean, the core of the problem was this stupid connection to the CD drive um, on this sound card. Uh, yeah, so it's working now. So that's good. That's really good. That's great. Um, I think this might be the end of the video. There's not much more to show you. There's really not a whole lot to this motherboard uh, that I haven't already covered. I mean, it looks like there's the L2 cache uh, video card. It's not too much going on. Uh, if you want to see more, better pictures of this, this motherboard, I'm probably gonna, will take it apart and take some uh, still pictures and put them on my blog when I write this computer up for a blog entry. So if you want to see more detailed specifics, um, check out the blog, I'll have a link. Thanks for watching. Uh, thankfully this machine's running now, so that's awesome, cool. But just remember, it could be the stupidest little thing. So if you're having a computer problem, reset everything exactly. Check every connection, every cable. It could be the most unexpected, stupid thing preventing it from running. For me, it was just an IDE cable connected to the wrong connector. And that was it. So thank you for watching. Actually, a quick update on this thing. I've been working on it for a couple hours. I did replace the CPU uh, with something a little bit more stock, uh, which is the 50 megahertz uh, 46DX2. So now it's running on a 25 megahertz front side bus. So it is slower now. I effectively cut its speed in half uh, or more, but you know I I think I want that uh, overdrive chip for another machine since I don't think I'll be hanging on to this one. Um, I never could get the, to recognize or work with a hard drive. Um, I tried do, two different IDE controllers, uh, discrete cards, I, I couldn't get it to work. Um, I, there's a jumper to disable the onboard I.O. I tried it with disabled, I tried it enabled, I, I tried at least six different kind of IDE hard drives, newer and old. Um, I tried the onboard controller different combinations, master, slave, I, it just, it, it would never see it. It would never recognize it. I tried uh, setting it up in BIOS. I used drives that had, you know, the specs clearly stated, but I don't know what it is with this machine. Um, I mean, if I kept trying, I, I could probably get it to work. I have, they were kind of generic controllers. I have a couple other controllers that are a little bit better that might work. I could always try to go the SCSI route and put in a, IDE SCSI card. I don't have a lot of IDE SCSI cards though, so I kind of like save those for projects that I care a little bit more about. So I think as I'm just going to leave this machine as is, but yeah, I, I have no idea why I couldn't get the uh, hard drive, it to recognize a hard drive with what I was writing. I could get into DOS if I booted from a, from a disk. I could boot from my DOS 6.22 uh, floppy disk and I could get into DOS and, uh, you know, run it that way so it's it's completely serviceable and usable 
Uh, but I just couldn't get it to recognize a hard drive, which is sort of strange for a 486 class machine because they're usually good about that. I, I expect that kind of thing from, you know, like a really, really old, like a 286 or something that's all weird, you know, that might not necessarily even have been meant to work with a hard drive, but I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, uh, it's not really worth any more of my time right now. So again, that's a little update. Thanks for watching.